Now for this first part I've sketched out what we're given but you don't have to do a sketch like this in fact you can do the problem without a sketch but it's just here so that it might help you visualize the problem. What we've got then is our particle P of mass 2 kilograms and it's moving under the action of a constant force F newtons. I haven't shown that actually at the moment. And we're told that when t equals naught, p has a velocity of 3i plus 2j meters per second. And at time t equals 4 seconds, it has a velocity of 15i minus 4j meters per second. And in the first part, we've got to find the acceleration of p in terms of i's and j's and I've set up my i and j directions here unit vectors i being horizontal j being vertical but as I say you don't have to draw this diagram but it might help as we go through the problem just to appreciate what's happening but in the first part then we've got to work out that acceleration a and we should know that acceleration is equal to the change in velocity that's the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by the time taken. You'll also notice that I've done these squiggles under these values here. That's because they're vector quantities. T obviously isn't a vector quantity, it's a scalar quantity. So all we do is we take the final velocity, which was this one, 15i minus 4j. And from that, we subtract the initial velocity, 3i plus 2j and we divide that by the time taken and the time taken then was from 0 to 4, 4 seconds. So if we work this out we've got 15 minus the 3i so that's going to give us 12i okay and then we've got minus 4j minus plus 2j so it's going to be minus 6j and that is all divided by 4 and if we divide each of these two components by 4, we're going to end up with 3i minus 1.5, all right, 1.5j. Okay, so there's our acceleration vector. And it's showing, if we were to add this to the sketch, that if I was to draw 3i minus 1.5j, I'm not drawing it to scale, but essentially you've got three units to the right and one and a half units down. So you've got basically an acceleration acting inwards, something like this. Let's just mark it up there as that acceleration is 3i minus 1.5j. Now, in the next part, we've got to find the magnitude of the force that is acting on the particle, the magnitude of F. Now, when you have a force, a force must act in the direction of the acceleration. So there's obviously going to be a force pushing on the particle. Let's call it F, as they do, okay? Now clearly this particle, when you look at it, is moving on some kind of path, something like this. So what we've got is the particle somewhere on this path is being pushed in as it moves around here. So as we've got to get F, okay, the magnitude of that force of F, we should know that force as a vector quantity equals the mass times the acceleration as a vector quantity. So we can easily work out what F is here because we're told the mass is 2 kilograms, so we've got 2 times the acceleration vector down here, 3i minus 1.5j. So that's our force measured in newtons. Let's just expand it. If we do, we've got 6i minus 3j. Now when it comes to working out the magnitude we're looking at the size of that force. And what we've got here is six units, if you like, to the right and three units down. So our force F 
is represented like this. This would be six units to the right, three units down. So when it comes to working out the magnitude, it's represented by the length of that vector. We should know that anyway without really necessarily resorting to the diagram. But the magnitude of the vector f, it can be written like this with the vector and two straight lines down here, is equal then by Pythagoras' theorem to the square root of 6 squared plus 3 squared. And if you work this out, it ends up as being the square root of 45. And the root of 45 comes out at 6.708 and so on, which you might want to round up, say, to three significant figures. That would be 6.71 newtons to three significant figures. OK, 3SF. Now for part C, we've got to work out the velocity of P at time t equals 6 seconds. So it's going to be coming around here somewhere over here, I would have thought. Not that, that really matters, but what we do is we use the equation v equals u plus at, but we're using it with vectors. So that's the reason why I'm underlining these values. So after six seconds, we know the initial velocity. It was 3i plus 2j. So we'll just squeeze that in there, 3i plus 2j. And then it's going to be six lots of the acceleration, t being six. So it's going to be six multiplied by the acceleration vector, which is 3i minus 1 and a half j. So we'll just squeeze that there, 3i minus 1 and a half, 1.5 j. Now if you work this out, you've got, as far as the i's go, you've got 3i plus 18i, so that's going to be 21i. And then for the j's, you've got 2j minus 9j, 6 times the minus 1.5j. So 2j minus 9j is going to give me minus 7j. And that's going to be in meters per second. Just to put that equals back in there. Now notice it said find the velocity, so that's where it stops there. If they had said find the speed though, all we need to do is find the magnitude of the velocity by applying Pythagoras' theorem, which would have been the square root of 21 squared plus 7 squared. Okay? But for this question anyway, that's where it stops. So I hope you've been able to follow that, and that brings us now to the end of this question.